So this PowerPoint is actually going to be recorded into two videos. My part one here will talk about producers, consumers, decomposers, and autotrophs versus heterotrophs. And then my second video for this PowerPoint will uh, be about food webs, food chains, and trophic levels. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and talk about life on Earth. Now, life on Earth requires energy. However, organisms cannot create energy. Uh, luckily, we have these organisms on Earth called autotrophs. And autotrophs are able to capture energy from non-living sources and convert it into a form that cells can use. So our most common autotroph are gonna be like plants that carry out photosynthesis. Now these plants, these autotrophs, are able to take that solar energy and through photosynthesis and the carbon cycle, taking in carbon dioxide and water, uh, they're gonna take in the C, H, and O from the environment and then take an input of solar energy and they're going to build macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. We don't use nucleic acids for our energy, but really carbohydrates and lipids are our primary sources of energy as organisms that need to eat. And so it's because of these autotrophs carrying out photosynthesis that really make that possible. And so our plants, our algae, our phytoplankton, cyanobacteria on Earth are able to take carbon dioxide and water, and through the two reactions of photosynthesis, they're able to convert that, those molecules, and take that solar energy and then use it to build glucose, starch, lipids, and that energy is actually going to be stored in the bonds of those molecules. And then we will eat that glucose, and that's how we get our energy. Our mitochondria will break it down. Um, anyway, so now there's actually a second type of autotroph uh, that carries out what's called chemosynthesis. So in the deep, dark depths of the ocean, you know, miles below the surface, light does not reach. And they have these areas called hydrothermal vents where you have gases being released from the interior of the earth. And in those gases, there are chemicals, primarily sulfide uh, or sulfur-based chemicals. And there's bacteria that are able to actually capture that energy from the chemicals instead of sunlight to then build energy-rich carbohydrates. And so when we talk about both uh, plants or algae, as well as uh, bacteria in the hydrothermal vents, um, we reference these autotrophs as primary producers. So primary producers are really going to be the bottom of the food chain or the bottom of the food web with the whole ecosystem of organisms or the whole community of organisms are based on. And so when we summarize autotrophs or primary producers, we really have two categories. We have photosynthetic organisms and chemosynthetic organisms. In photosynthesis, they're going to convert um, like light energy into a usable form in the form of carbohydrates. And then in chemosynthesis, the bacteria are going to harness the energy from chemicals, primarily hydrogen sulfide, to also build carbohydrates. So in both of these types of reactions, we have energy-rich carbohydrates that are going to provide organisms energy. So any organism that eats those primary producers or eats the autotrophs will now have access to that energy. So organism examples that carry out photosynthesis, we have plants, algae, phytoplankton, and cyanobacteria. And then for our chemosynthetic organisms, it's really going to be the bacteria that live in the hydrothermal, not in the vents, but near the hydrothermal vents. Okay, now not all organisms though are autotrophs, right? So animals, fungi, and most bacteria uh, cannot carry out photosynthesis or chemosynthesis for that matter. And therefore they get their energy from other organisms. So organisms that obtain their energy and nutrients from others are called heterotrophs. Now, heterotrophs can further be divided into two categories. So with our heterotrophs, uh, we have both consumers and decomposers. So when we look at examples, let's talk about consumers first. We have five categories of consumers that we're gonna talk about. So the ones that I think most people are familiar with is we have our herbivores, which are organisms that are going to eat plants. 
We have omnivores that are going to eat both plants and animals. And then we have carnivores that just eat animals. And I know here I have large animals in my, my pictures, but I want to point out that something like a spider is actually a carnivore because it eats other insects, right? And like herbivores, I'm sorry, omnivores could be like a squirrel a mouse that eats seeds and nuts, but also insects. Um, now the two other categories of consumers that we have, we have scavengers that are going to consume the carcasses of other animals. Now I have raccoons here because we can also think of scavengers as generalists that really will eat a wide variety of foods. Um, and then we also have detritivores. Now detritivores, they chew or grind de detritus into smaller pieces. So uh, we're gonna use these earthworms as an example. So the earthworms are living in soil, in the, in the ground, and they're actually gonna eat decomposing uh, like plant material or decomposing material. So plant leaves you can think about that are in the process of being broken down by decomposers, uh, that's detritus. And so um, they will actually help in the cycling of nutrients because they'll eat this decaying matter and then they poop it out. And in their poop or their waste is more nitrogen and phosphorus to be recycled back into the soil. Um, and so and then our second uh, category of heterotroph is actually going to be our decomposers. Now decomposers include bacteria and fungi. Now uh, heterotrophs, as we mentioned earlier, they have to uh, get their energy from other sources. So consumers had mouths to eat um, and get energy from their food that way, but both bacteria and fungi do not have mouths to eat. So they actually get their energy by chemically breaking down organic matter. So the like plant matter that they're growing on, they're actually sending chemicals out to break the bonds and break it down, and then they'll absorb their energy that way. Now, this process produces detritus, which is small pieces of dead and decaying plant matter uh, that then is eaten by those organisms like worm. All right, all right. So that is my summary on autotrophs versus heterotrophs. So autotrophs automatically make their own food and they get their energy or they convert non-living sources of energy, so sunlight or chemicals, into a usable form, for example, carbohydrates. And then heterotrophs are organisms that have to get their energy from other organisms. So we have our consumers and our decomposers. And so consumers are going to be your uh, herbivores, omnivores, carnivores, scavengers, and detritivores. And then we also have our decomposers, uh, our heterotrophs, but they don't eat, but they are gonna break down and recycle nutrients uh, back into the soil and absorb their energy in the process. And our two examples of decomposers are bacteria and fungi. All right, all right, check out part two that is on food webs and food chains and trophic levels. And if you're a teacher watching this, you can check the link below if you'd like to buy the PowerPoint that I used in this video. All right, all right, good job.